Ever wondered what it would be like to hear the sound of a black hole? <laughs> NASA's got you covered. Here is a screaming black hole. Screaming in space? <laughs> I thought in space no one can hear you scream. Well, let me explain. Using a telescope, NASA examined the movements of hot gas in a cluster of galaxies in 2002. Then they converted what they found into a sonification. The sound, mm, how can I put it politely, wasn't appealing, but that's okay. After all, you're able to hear the noise hot gas produces in a cluster of galaxies 250 million light years away. Hey, how would you like to hear the sound gas produces right here on Earth? Yeah, never mind. Sound waves already existed over there in the gas cluster, so experts just rescaled them to the range of human hearing. This is how they converted the input coming from the telescope. The principle is universal. In our atmosphere, we can hear stuff because pressure waves move through a medium like liquid or gas. Sound waves in these galaxies can also move because they're surrounded by gas. What does it have to do with black holes? Well, the thing triggering those pressure waves in the cluster is a giant black hole. To be more precise, it's a supermassive black hole that weighs millions of times more than the Sun. Wow! Experts still don't fully understand the relationship between supermassive black holes and the clusters surrounding them. They only know that these two evolve together. They're interrelated. The cluster feeds the black hole with new material and so on. And in return, the black hole heats the cluster. That's all we know. Now, this made me wonder how large the biggest black holes are. There are four types of black holes. Stellar, intermediate, supermassive, and miniature. Naturally, the biggest ones fall into the category of supermassive. The largest black hole in the universe we've discovered so far is about 66 billion times larger than the Sun. It's one of the brightest objects in the universe. Astronomers keep scanning space and finding new black holes. But have you wondered when the first black hole was spotted? It was discovered by different researchers independently in 1971. Scientists first confirmed that these objects were formed from the remnants of massive stars. After a black hole appeared, it then consumed all the nearby objects. Here is a quick recap of how these space objects work. Their gravitational force is super strong. Nothing can escape a black hole after crossing the event horizon. Black holes eat everything, hey, just like me. <laughs> I mean, even light gets trapped inside them. What's even cooler slash scarier is that the laws of time and space become distorted there. If you were falling into a black hole, you would realize that time slows down there. Einstein explains this in his famous general relativity theory. In very, very basic terms, time gets affected by how fast you are moving at extreme speeds. NASA has discovered a rapidly growing black hole. But don't worry, the world isn't in danger. This black hole has been in front of the eyes of astronomers this whole time. It's in a region of a well-studied sky field. Astronomers say that this hole formed 750 million years after the Big Bang. You know, the birth of our universe. So why are black holes so bright? Well, that's a bit ironic. When I defined this space phenomenon, I said that black holes were so dense that even light got trapped there. But ask any astrophysicist, and they'll confirm that black holes are among the brightest objects in space. That's because black holes don't exist alone. They sit at the centers of galaxies and are usually surrounded by clouds of hot gas. And these clouds create cosmic auroras around black holes. I must mention, though, that you can't see a black hole directly. What you see is actually the effects it has on its environment. For instance, you can see space objects being ripped apart by a black hole. Remember when the first time ever silhouette image of a black hole was shared with the public in 2019? Proof, you fellas! You wouldn't really see the black hole if there was no orange ring. Why is the ring orange and not green or purple? The dark shadow inside is the shadow of the black hole. The glowing orange of the bright ring in the image isn't the real hue of the gas. I'm a little heartbroken here. It's a representation picked by researchers to depict the brightness of the emissions. A scientist explained that yellow is the most intense emission, red is less intense, and black has little or no emission at all. In the optical range, this ring would likely seem white, perhaps tinged with blue or red. Now, spaghettification is a real word. That's an astonishing ability black holes have. 
If a giraffe fell into a black hole, it would stretch into a long, spaghetti-like strand. On Earth, the giraffe's legs are closer to the center of Earth, so they're more powerfully attracted to the surface than the animal's head. This rule works in the animal's favor on Earth, but would work against it inside a black hole. In a black hole, there's extreme gravity. The closer the giraffe's legs got to the center of the black hole, the more the pull of gravity would stretch them. And the closer to the center the giraffe got, the faster its legs would move. But the top half of the giraffe's body would be farther away, so it wouldn't move toward the center as fast as the legs. Here comes the spaghettification. Can we have meatballs with that? No? Okay. The only difference between a black hole and our sun is that the center of the hole is made of super-dense material. It provides the black hole with a strong gravitational field that can trap everything, including light. This is why we can't see black holes. Did you know that, theoretically, you could turn anything into a black hole? For instance, if you shrank the sun to approximately 4 miles across, you would compress the matter inside to an extremely small size. This would make it so dense that our star would turn into a black hole. You could do the same with a planet or even your own body. Is there something called a white hole, or is it just a myth? White holes exist, in theory. Hypothetically, they function in the opposite way to black holes. Nothing can enter them. Physicists think of black and white holes as yin and yang, or two sides of the same coin. For them, a white hole looks exactly like a black hole, which makes different things come out of it. But the existence of white holes hasn't been proven yet. And how about wormholes? There are so many movies about black holes and wormholes. How many of them are based on reality, and how much is fiction? Some people believe that black holes function like wormholes. You go inside and exit in another part of the universe. Since we still have a lot to learn and discover about physics, no one can prove this theory is wrong or right. Astrophysics says we need to have a solid theory that unifies general relativity with quantum mechanics. Black holes are among the largest structures in the universe, but there might be tiny specimens. The mass of the smallest black hole we know about is only three times greater than that of our sun. Now, apparently, black holes can vanish. Stephen Hawking developed a theory of Hawking radiation. According to it, radiation decreases the mass and rotational energy of black holes, and ultimately, they evaporate. This process occurs very slowly, though if we're not talking about small black holes. Astronomers have discovered an elusive black hole in the neighboring galaxy. What makes this one special is the fact that it's the first dormant stellar black hole outside of our galaxy. This type of black hole is hard to observe because such holes don't interact much with their environment. They don't emit as much radiation as other black holes. Well, back on Earth, what about sinkholes? Well, different physics. Yet, if you cross the event horizon, your whole car can disappear. Whoops! So, you're going on a journey to a black hole. Well, you'll need a lot of provisions, because the nearest black hole is 1,011 light-years away. This black pearl was found in the solar system called HR 6819. It was hidden in orbit with two other stars, which you can see with the human eye. Scientists have been studying this system since the 80s, but this winter, it revealed its main secret. This particular black hole is considered relatively small. But despite this, its mass is four times bigger than our Sun, and it's 2,500 light-years closer to Earth than the next nearest black hole. Eh, but don't worry. For people, the distance of 1,000 light-years is unreachable. For example, If we were to make a model where the Earth's distance to the Sun was only 0.05 inches, you would have to travel about 4 miles to get to this black hole. But our galaxy, the Milky Way, is about 100,000 light-years wide. So the distance of 1,011 light-years doesn't seem that long in comparison. But before you jump inside this black giant, let me try to discourage you. A black hole is a place in space-time where nothing can leave its orbit. No particles, electromagnetic radiation, or even photons of light can escape from a black hole. So you should understand that a journey to such a dangerous object as a black hole is a one-way ticket. And the way black holes are born is incredible. 
When a star runs out of fuel, the star collapses under its own weight and becomes a black hole, like the supermassive black hole in the Messier 87 galaxy. Its mass is 7 billion times bigger than the Sun, and it was discovered by the Event Horizon Telescope in April 2019. Okay, good. I see you've already bought a ticket for a faster-than-light spaceship. Since there's no refunds, and you don't want to lose the money, it's time to get ready for the trip. Oh, feel free to leave your luggage at home. 3, 2, 1, off you go! You're leaving Earth's orbit, saying goodbye to the Moon, and don't forget to cheer up Pluto by saying it is big enough to be a planet. Then you pass the highway of dark space, and here's your stop, the black hole. Put on your suit, because you're going into outer space. The first thing you see is the event horizon. The gravitational field of a black hole bends the light around its edges, so the event horizon is like a croissant for the observer. Once you reach the event horizon, though, you won't be able to get back out. You may also notice that there's some kind of chaos in this ring. Some lights move in different directions. This happens because you get a mirror effect. But we still don't know what's inside the black hole. So you decide to send in a drone first. The gravity field of the black hole quickly draws in your metal buddy. As soon as he enters the event horizon, his body begins to change its shape. It becomes elongated like a strand of spaghetti. And the closer it gets to the center of the black hole, the longer it becomes. You also notice the drone has slowed its movement and now gradually approaches the black hole center. This is another effect of this space monster. The black hole's vast mass curves not only space, but also time. If you hang one watch next to a black hole and another on the wall in your bedroom, you will see that in the first watch, the second hand has barely moved, while a whole day has passed on Earth. And the more massive the black hole, the stronger the effect of slowing time. Theoretically, if you have a spaceship that can overcome the gravity of a black hole, you can fly to it and wait for a few seconds. During this time, your friends on Earth would live a whole life. Hmm, the flashlight on the head of your drone has turned red. This color change has happened for the same reason. The clocks that are deeper in a gravitational well tick slower when observed from outside. This also affects the photon's wavelength. We see red light because it has the longest wavelength of any color in the visible spectrum. All these things actually happen to the drone in a split second. But it seems slow to you because of the time war. Alright, it's time to enter the black hole yourself. The final preparation is your suit that will protect you from hawking radiation. This radiation is created by black holes due to quantum effects near the event horizon. Hawking radiation reduces the weight of the black hole. So if the black hole doesn't absorb more mass from nearby objects, it becomes smaller and then simply disappears. Oh yes, the black holes are also mortal. But Hawking radiation can turn you into ash, and you'd lose the chance to see the black hole from the inside. Okay. Now, let's do what you traveled 1,011 light years to do. One big jump, and you are caught in the gravity field of the black hole. This is the point of no return. But your distance allows you to set a stable orbit so that you can spin around the black hole like the moon around the Earth. A little higher, and you'll be thrown into infinity. A little lower, and you will be dragged into the black hole. So, theoretically, planets could exist at this distance, and even inhabit it if there were the necessary conditions. A couple of minutes later and you are approaching the event horizon. Oh, look down. Your body is so long. You are now spaghetti yourself. Look around you. The stars are turning blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As you fall into a black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths are getting shorter, so the red photons change into blue and everything starts to look blue. Now you are right outside the event horizon and the only thing you can see is a round blue beam of light above you. But soon you will stop seeing even that. So you've survived the strong gravitational field of a black hole and the Hawking radiation didn't burn you to ash. You are now in the heart of the most mysterious object in the universe. You have front row seats, 
but the view is not that impressive. This is the darkest place you've ever been to. Even the usual laws of physics just stop working here. Theoretically, time goes by so slowly here that your home planet could no longer exist. And a new black hole could appear in place of our sun. But you will live exactly as long as there's enough oxygen in your suit. But what if this cosmic object is actually a wormhole that leads to another place in the universe? This is a popular theory, but scientists still can't confirm it. But if it is true, then after a while, you'll see a blue light again. Now you'll experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once you leave the singularity, which means the black hole's heart, you will be in the event horizon. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. You can feel the shaking and warmth from the hawking radiation. But then you're thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. No one knows what will happen next. Are you in contact with an unknown life form? Or will the conditions there be intolerable for a human being? Or maybe you will not go to another place in space, but to a parallel universe. This theory also exists. According to it, black holes are portals to other dimensions. Simply put, there are endless copies of our universe. Every time you were faced with a choice, your twin from another universe chose something else. But let's leave that to fantastic movies. Right now, the journey into a black hole is merely impossible for humanity. We can't even reach the nearest one. But one day, we will learn more about these space objects' nature. And maybe this knowledge will push humanity forward and make us a multi-galactic civilization. To see one of the most significant astronomical events of all time, we go to South America. In the Atacama Desert, Chile, we find the most advanced technology for space observation. Here, the Royal Astronomical Community members watch for six months as a black hole simply absorbed a massive star. By the way, these are the same scientists who prove that in the center of our Milky Way galaxy is a supermassive black hole, and even took a photo of it. For the first time in history, this incredible event happened very close to Earth. Well, the distance of 215 million light years is considered quite close in astronomy terms anyway. Light from this event reached our planet in September of 2019, and even the most experienced scientists dropped their jaws in surprise. Imagine a star the size of our Sun, about 860,000 miles wide. Such stars have enough weight to create a strong gravitational field, holding many planets in their orbit. And now, let's place a giant black hole next to it. The hole is absolutely black, shaped like a disk, and weighs a billion times more than this star. The force of its gravitational field is incredible. Nothing can leave its gravity force. Objects that can move at the speed of light will still fall into this black abyss. Even light itself cannot escape its boundaries. As soon as a star enters the gravitational field of a black hole, it has no chance. At first, it tries to resist the pull of the black hole. Still, the star's outer layers begin to stretch toward the black hole, just like spaghetti. This is due to a powerful force of attraction. If you had the opportunity to extend your hand toward the black hole, hmm. you would see your fingers begin to stretch and elongate. This is because the force of attraction increases with every inch. Therefore, it acts stronger on your fingers than on your arm. That's why this process of pulling objects into a black hole is called spaghettification. The first thing to be sucked into the black hole is the star's crown. This is the outer shell of the star, which consists of hot plasma. You may notice how the star begins to shrink in size. This is because that plasma makes up most of the visible sun. When this hot plasma spaghetti reaches the black hole, it may appear to remain on the disk's edge and continue to orbit the black hole. But, in fact, there is no turning back anymore. The star's particles have already hit the event horizon of the dark abyss. The gravitational field of a black hole bends light around its edges, so the event horizon looks a bit like a croissant for the observer. Boy, lots of food metaphors here. I'm getting hungry. 
You may also notice a kind of chaos in this ring, as if some light particles are moving in one direction and others in another. This happens because of a mirror effect. But you can be sure that whatever reaches the event horizon will, sooner or later, be pulled into the singularity, or the black pearl of the black hole. Another illusion you spot is the star particles in the event horizon moving slower. The truth is that supermassive objects like a black hole curve space-time around them, and the more massive the object, the slower time flows near it. If you hang one watch beside a black hole and another on a wall in your bedroom, you will see that the second hand in the first watch barely moves, while a whole day passes on Earth. As observers, it seems to us that the particles of light have slowed their movement. But in fact, they may have already been absorbed by the black hole ages ago. Now, massive streams of red-hot plasma splash into space, just like spaghetti sauce. <laughs> when a black hole has absorbed star material, it emits powerful rays of energy at a rate of about 6,200 miles per second. This release of energy is accompanied by an intense flash. It's thanks to this flash that scientists can even detect this process in the first place. This phenomenon can be observed when a supernova explodes. When nothing remains of the star's body, we can still see stardust and other particles in the black holes of an horizon. Kind of like the Parmesan cheese sprinkled on the spaghetti. Hey, stop me if I'm taking this too far. When the process of spaghettification is completed, about half of the star's weight has been thrown into outer space as dust and glowing particles. The other half was entirely absorbed by the black hole. The scientists observed this process for almost six months. But what would be more interesting is to dive into a black hole yourself. Well, we can't do that yet, but we can simulate this process. Here is a little drone, our metal friend, kind of like a meatball. No, I haven't had lunch yet. Right now, it's at a safe distance from the black hole, the length of about three widths of the event horizon. Objects at this distance can orbit the black hole safely. A little closer, and it'll be swallowed up by a dark infinity. So our destroyed star could have safely existed at this distance. Moreover, planets can live at this distance. And if there is a suitable source of light and heat somewhere nearby, life can exist on these planets too. But our goal is the singularity, and we guide the meatball, I mean the drone, closer to the event horizon. After a few minutes, the force of attraction begins to strengthen, and the drone starts to stretch like spaghetti. When it begins spinning around the black disk, it means it has reached the event horizon and has started its descent into the black abyss. Now, let's look at everything from the drone's perspective. All the light from the stars that it sees becomes blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As it falls into the black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths grow shorter, so the red photons change into blue. The drone continues to fall and is already completely hidden from our eyes. And all that the robot sees is a bright, thin blue beam. Now it's in complete darkness. There's absolutely nothing here, not even time. Here, time goes so slowly that our entire solar system could grow old and cease to exist during a minute spent in a black hole. But our drone will live until its battery is empty. Hey, the drone sees a small bundle of light again, and it's getting closer and more prominent. Now the drone will experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once the drone leaves the singularity, the heart of the black hole, it will be on the event horizon once again. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. Then the drone is thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. Well, returning from a black hole is just a theory. Some people think that black holes are a kind of wormhole that can lead us to distant places in space. But so far, these theories are considered fiction. Black holes are quite challenging to detect. The problem is, they are, well, black, just like space. They don't emit light like stars, so they can only be detected by gravity anomalies. Despite this, scientists believe there are a vast numbers of black holes in our universe. 
They're born when a massive star collapses under its own weight. And given the infinite number of stars in the universe, black holes are probably a common phenomenon. Scientists believe black holes have their own lifetimes. This is because of Hawking radiation. A black hole loses mass, and so, to continue existing, it has to absorb massive objects, like the star we just watched. But if the black hole lives in deep space, it has less to absorb and will most likely begin to shrink until it just disappears. Like this plate of spaghetti. Mm.